protected by, by Rome. Jew, you know, the Jewish religion was protected because the Jews would rather die than worship the Roman gods or to worship Caesar, and they realized that, so they gave them the right to worship their own god, and they didn't have to worship Caesar, okay? Well, now that, see, the Christians are not a part of the Jews, they, they began to attack the Christians. And now the question arose in their minds whether it's really worth it. Should I stand my ground and should I suffer the loss of all my possessions? Should I, should I suffer this torture, put in prison? Should I even put my life at risk for something I can't even see? I can't even, you know, I can't see heaven. I can't see what's promised. I don't, you know, do I really believe these things are true? Well, that's why the author of the Hebrews is telling them, well, this is what faith is, believing what you can't see, holding fast to the God's promises when they are not yet in front of your eyes. And he points out that this is exactly what your forefathers did. I mean, think about how people lived in the Old Testament. These heroes of the faith that he lists out in Hebrews chapter 11, they are all here for one reason, and that is they believed God. And because they did, God's promises were fulfilled to them. They received them. They received the righteousness which comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They received deliverance from God, and sometimes they didn't, but they suffered because they believed that what God said was true. They could not abandon him. They knew what God had done. They knew what would happen if they denied him, and so they held fast. So the author to the Hebrews is really inviting them to ask why these whom they admired so much were able to do the things that they did. Why it was that Abel was, was willing to offer the sacrifice he did rather than the one that Cain did, the one that looked forward to Jesus, and he entered into heaven when Cain didn't. Why did Abel do that? Why did, why did Enoch live the way he did and walk with God? And why did God take him to heaven long before his time when he was a, a mere young 300 and something years of, of age when he could have lived into the 900s? Why did Noah spend 100 years and this, this huge project, building this ark that would house his family and all of these animals over a threat that was 100 years away that he had really no way of knowing would take place except the bare word of God. God said it was going to take place. Why was Abraham willing to leave his family and his homeland and to go out to a place he had never seen before? How was Sarah able to conceive a child when she was 90 years old, and 90 in those days is not exactly as it, as it is in these days, but it was still way past the age of, of bearing children. And why when that child finally came, I believe Abraham was first promised when he was 75 and he didn't actually have Isaac until he was 100, why was he willing to take that child to Mount Moriah and sacrifice that child to God, the child he had waited for so many years, and the child that God had promised him and through whom he was going to multiply Abraham's offspring as the stars of heaven. If this child dies, the promise of God dies with him, or does it? Why was he willing to do that? Why was Joseph giving instructions about his remains, talking about an event that was going to take place many years in the future, like some an additional 400 years in the future? Hey, when God takes you out of Egypt, Take my bones with you and bury them in the promised land. How was Israel able to make it through the Red Sea safely when the Egyptians were drowned? How was Joshua able to make these impregnable walls of Jericho fall inward? How did Rahab survive when everybody else was destroyed inside that city? You know, we could go on and on. We think about why is it that the three Jews that were taken by Nebuchadnezzar did not bow down to the statue? and why they were willing to face the fiery furnace and how they survived in that furnace. How Daniel survived a night in the lion's den. How Jesus was able to complete the mission God sent him into the world to do when almost the entire world was set against him. How the apostles overcame their fears and evangelized Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And how Paul was able to bring the gospel almost to the entire world I mean, almost single-handedly, he did have help. But think about what he was able to accomplish. Now, how were they able to do this based purely on the bare word of God? Well, the answer is they simply believed what God said. 
they were confident that God was going to do what God said he was going to do. And then the question we need to ask ourselves is, why do we need faith? Why do we need to take God at his word and believe that he will do as he said he would do? Well, because of what the author to the Hebrews says. Without faith, we can't be saved. Without faith, we can't please God. Without faith, we're never going to come to God. We're never going to seek Him for anything. Without faith, we're never going to receive what it is the Lord has promised. We need faith. Faith is trusting God, believing He's trustworthy. Faith is not doubting God. And when we doubt God, we're, we're casting aspersion on His integrity and on His character, and we're saying God is not trustworthy. Let me close with these words that James wrote regarding wisdom and realizing that what he says regarding wisdom is also true from about anything we ask from God. He says in, in James 1, verses 5 through 8, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You see, we have to believe because the only way we're going to receive anything from God, if we doubt, we're not going to receive anything. Is it any wonder the devil will attack faith. I mean, he can short-circuit what God can do through us if he can just get us to doubt. Well, we're going to look this evening at, at some of the ways that the devil actually does this and what it is that we need to do to have faith, to have a strong faith, and to be able to do and, again, to, to pray and to receive what it is the Lord promises us we can in his word. Let's bow for just a moment of prayer, shall we? And, and let's ask the Lord to apply what we've heard uh, to our lives.